Welcome all to the webinar series on Embedded System Development and its application organized by ERNDC Institute of Technology, CDAC Trivandrum. And today's webinar topic is product development based on embedded system. And uh, uh, as you know, ERNDC it is the academic wing of CDAC Trivandrum which conducts two MDEC programs. MDEC in VLC and embedded systems and MDEC in cyber forensics and information security. And we are organizing uh, the webinar. And uh, today the webinar topic is product development based on embedded system. And the speaker is Ramji Krishna. He is the uh, senior design engineer in degree control sing Trivandrum. And he is uh, uh, MTech in power electronics and he has 13 years of industrial experience in embedded system design and his main areas include embedded product designing, board level circuit design, PCB design, embedded system programming etc. On behalf of ERNDCIT, I warmly welcome uh, Ram Krishna to handle the question. Hand over to you Ram. Okay, thank you Divya. Um, very good evening friends. Uh, I would like to share some um, process and the uh, factors involved in the product development based on the embedded system. And um, actually, Ma'am Ma has introduced me, and uh, I would like to introduce myself. Ma myself, Ramji Krishna. I am working as a senior design engineer at Degree Controls in Incorporation in Toronto, Maine. So, let us start the product development based on the embedded system. Okay. So, I think all of you are very uh, familiar with the embedded system and the whole theory as well. Uh, once again, let us just go through the uh, theory part. Okay, just uh, uh, okay. Uh, this is now I just want to familiarize what is an embedded system. Okay, I think uh, all of you are very well known about the embedded system. It's an uh, electronic system which integrates both the hardware as well as the software part. Uh, to provide a, a particular project solutions or any solutions as kind of an embedded system. That means it contains a hardware as well as a software. Both integration uh, makes a project solutions. That is called a embedded solution. And uh, we have different types of embedded systems. And uh, based uh, on the performance and its functional requirement, we can classify that area. And based on the performance of the controller that is uh, uh, based on the performance of the controller we can classify into other areas so i think you can see the uh, screen as well that uh, uh, two main block is there based on the performance and the functional requirements and based on the performance of the uh, microcontroller okay then based on the performance and the functional requirement that means uh, how the embedded system it's uh, classified on based on its functional type that is called a real time uh, systems, standalone system, network system, and mobile system. So, first we can just go through the what is a real time system. Okay, a real time system is something related to time constraints that is, the embedded system is developed for or designed for a particular output which is based on the time basis. We can uh, called it is as a real time embedded system, and we can just uh, take over to the standalone system. That standalone system is a system and control system which will give our output as a standalone, which it never depends on any other criteria, for example, any other devices or inputs or something like that. It will be standalone and works as a standalone devices. Okay, then we can go to the network system. A networks embedded control system is which, which one we can integrate it into different types of devices or other control networks uh, like uh, LAN or Ethernet or any other digital mode of communications as well. Okay, then uh, based on the functional requirement, there is a mobile system. Mobile system means uh, which uh, can, uh, embedded system, a uh, control system which is able to mobile mobility uh, is a portability. Okay, which will be designed based on the portability. For example, it's a, it's a, to, um, for example, a mobile phone or any uh, types of small gadgets, 
something like that one is based on the embedded system uh, or based on the development based on the probabilities right? uh, that is all reference to the performance and the functional requirements okay and uh, based on the performance of microcontroller that is based on uh, how the system is scaled to okay what is this performance based on that is small scale medium scale and sophisticated uh, uh, control systems is what is a small scale uh, embedded system means it can have uh, less amount of uh, processing power for the processing power that means small, small scale uh, some sort of microcontrollers are used for the design and the uh, purpose of or that one and uh, uh, medium scale is which one which we can uh, much more complicated than the small scale system that will use the uh, sustained bit or 13 bits uh, microcontroller uh, DSPs or this types of architecture we will be uh, having and um, uh, maybe uh, that type of product development includes uh, software includes C or C++ Java some RPOS may be included in the uh, medium scale of embedded uh, systems okay next is sophisticated system that is very complex system that uh, based on this performance this complex system means uh, it will uh, include very uh, software complexities uh, and uh, may, uh, need some PLSA uh, very highly configurable uh, and uh, processes we will be used for these sophisticated systems for example uh, FPGS or something like that one so these are the uh, main types of embedded system we can just uh, go through that one if you have any questions uh, you can share me now or shall i move to next slide uh, yes i think if there is any question they can put it in the chat okay, okay. Uh, and we can all answer uh, in the end okay okay that's fine okay let's move to next slide and next is just the introduction of product life cycle that is how a product is developed based on this analysis and the own design process okay so initially uh, we have an idea to develop a product we have to gather the requirements as well only we know well known about the requirements on the all the constraints and the issues then only we can design a system a control system or an embedded system okay so first of all we have to gather all the requirements based on the product development that is the main input to the uh, product development that is a basic thing okay well, for the requirement collection uh, we have to identify an issue or analyze an uh, issue uh, very carefully generally we can uh, provide a solutions uh, with the help of the control system okay so the first phase of the product life cycle that is the product development is definitely it is the requirement construction that is the identification of the any issues or any problems related to which the solution has to be provided okay then uh, we have to provide some specifications specification in the sense based on the issues and the requirements we have to provide specifications specification means in the sense of um uh, we have a lot of issues facing uh, nowadays and we have to make it clear uh, with the uh, with the base of the into the basic of electronics so that we can move to the uh, design or the uh, process flow so the specification must be in a technical form of uh, area and uh, based on the issues we have analyzed so the specification needs to be the basic thing that we have to for put forward for the design okay next based on the specifications and the requirements we have to develop some block diagrams or data flow graph so the block diagram we may know the block diagram will be very helpfully uh, helpful for us to develop uh, the base study or the uh, case study of the embedded product development so from on the very first look of the uh, block diagram we can identify this type of system or which type of uh, control system we can develop and all those things so based on the block diagram uh, the design flow will be um, all the requirements will be uh, function um, make into a functional block diagram 
okay then the development the development is based uh, if uh, if you take as a example for a embedded system uh, we both require hardware as well as the software assistance that's the especially what we mean is uh, if a processor requires a software that means the firmware and uh, also requires some hardware and both the integration will be work as an embedded system so uh, we have analyzation on the hardware and the software requirements based on the design parameters okay so based on these block diagrams and all the design parameters we have to define what are the hardware we require and what are the topologies of the software we have to make um, to uh, for the development of the embedded particular embedded system so once we develop and design the hardware and the software we have to integrate both into uh, a simple platform and we have to test that one whether it is working as uh, as uh, our logic and the, as per our requirements and all those things so testing is the uh, key area where we can put all the designs and the software is uh, check whether it is uh, all meet the specification based on the, our analysis then the deployment deployment means uh, what uh, after testing if we have any issues we have to re uh, go back to the design process again yeah, uh, if we see any issues uh, in the hardware or software we have to again go for, uh, back to the design uh, if we have any issues with the hardware or software uh, design we have to go back to design otherwise if we have any firmware modification we have to go back to the development area and after that it is a cycling process and until the testing passes we have to we continue with the development and after that we can deploy the product as well after testing and uh, after the uh, the testing part contains uh, several forms of uh, quality analysis and all those things and after that we can deploy the uh, complete product into our customer or the, the area where we want to implement the embedded system okay so this is the uh, basic product life cycle that we have to follow uh, to develop a embedded product development okay and this is the just uh, enlarging the flow process and the design and the development process of the entire report uh, as like the previous slide uh, it is almost the same uh, but uh, it is an elaborate of things uh, that where the inputs and the outputs are going on so initially the requirement analysis we have discussed earlier the requirement is the basic thing uh, that we have to need uh, initially and based on the requirement analysis we have to put some specification based on the technical things and then we have to uh, develop a system architecture uh, system architecture means uh, we have to um, um, uh, make materialize the, some things uh, into an embedded system so that we have to uh, meet the specification into some architecture both the hardware as well as the uh, firmware so to uh, complete the system architecture we need some basic idea about the hardware designs as well as the software designs so that we can move to the hardware as well as the software so in the hardware section uh, mainly as uh, i have uh, says uh, before it triggers a block diagram and the block diagram which calls out all the functionalities all the uh, peripheral connectivities as well as all the things uh, included in the block diagram and we can uh, design and uh, we can do the hardware things by doing some pcb or schematic development and based upon that um, we can implement the hardware that means the hardware we can uh, make it under the production based on the our uh, design architecture and then we have to test the hardware whether it is working or not that uh, uh, we all know that an embedded system would uh, definitely works uh, its major outputs and based on the logic only uh, with the help of the firmware but even though we have to test the hardware on the initial time itself whether the 
all the systems are uh, well powered or well uh, behaving according to the logic okay then after that we have to uh, if we pass the hardware testing once uh, we have we can move for the integration system integration we can move that back to the system uh, like that it is also same as the hardware side the software design is also uh, based on the software architecture specifications that the main software what are the uh, we can define this as a flow chart a flow flow diagram and uh, then we can split up the whole things that we may need multiple implementation of different protocols uh, communication protocols com uh, control loops uh, more more and more things so we can subdivide the whole jobs into different modules as well so, so software part so this module can be uh, one, uh, can be done one by one and uh, then we can run the software impl implementation as well so after the implementation of and the, uh, the software we have to test the software whether it is uh, uh, finally uh, working based on the logic or not so for the software the uh, software testing we can use some simulate software or uh, nowadays all, uh, almost all the ids are uh, giving some simulation platform for the testing without uh, the help of the hardware research. so we can definitely test, uh, test all the things uh, that are uh, hardware without the hardware help of the hardware as well and we can move to the uh, system integration then the system integration part we will sorry we will uh, integrate both the tested hardware as well as the tested software and uh, in this integration part there may be some issues uh, we can face at this phase uh, whether uh, maybe the hardware is not uh, will not be properly work based upon the logics and the software that we develop so in that area we have to validate all the process definitely we have to validate all the process so after the integration we have to validate uh, whether the hardware is properly behaving as per the coding that we have also the software we have developed for the particular thing so after the validation if we face any issues then we have to um, uh, again go through the all the architecture specification and we have to rebuild the all the uh, scenarios and uh, again we have to do the maintenance work as well okay so these are the basic flow process involved in the product development this is all are the theories can give you a better idea with an example later okay so here are the major aspects that we have to uh, consider uh, while we go for the product development based on the embedded system the first one is the uh, digital hardware and the software architecture that we have discussed earlier that the hardware and the software architecture that uh, developed based on the requirements and the specification uh, is the major role on our embra uh, product development so we have to uh, consider it as a major aspect of the uh, uh, as the hardware and the software architecture then the formal design development optimization process that is uh, while we design uh, continues with the design and the development and uh, may may uh, maybe face um, many issues uh, uh, at that time we have to debug all the process and also optimization optimization means in the sense uh, we can optimize both the hardware and software with the power concerning and the memory optimization like that okay then safety and reliability like that we can we all know that uh, the all the embedded system need to be very safety and reliability that the reliability it won't be a, a design which will fail uh, under the testing or something like that it has to be retained for a long last time so the reliability must be a huge issue for the uh, this consideration so a robust design must be care uh, while we do the architectural designs as well 
and the safety is also a major thing that uh, the safety means every uh, help on devices and all the things may be uh, considered as a safety device uh, since uh, all the things uh, we have to be a deployment in various industrial areas or some other areas so uh, there won't be any issues happened due to our design as well as the other designs to our systems also so the safety and the reliability is the most important thing uh, when we move from the industrial areas as well and the next thing is the hardware and the software designs software means the firmware uh, design is as well initially we have done the architecture and based on the architecture we have to deploy the firmware as well as the hardware design in this area we have we have to be very keen that uh, all the things uh, are designed at this area so the hardware as well as the firmware ha has to be a robust one based on the our architecture so next is the interface to physical world analog and the digital signals okay like that we know that uh, we already discussed that uh, many of the embedded systems are standalone and uh, network systems and something like that so uh, our system must be able to communicate with the other devices and if need if then a need is there is there a, a network system is need, a need for that one we have to communicate and uh, to the other devices or we have to interface that digital and the analog signals to other uh, devices as well uh, other uh, devices means we have to transfer the data from our uh, our control system to any other control system so it would be integrity and uh, compatibility issue uh, at this time so we have to take care whether it is uh, compatible with the other devices and industrial standards of this type of communications and next we have to consider a major aspect as the deeper troubleshooting and of our designs as well so uh, uh, if our architecture is fine and the firmware and the hardware uh, design is fine there won't be much more issue but uh, we can face file uh, through the phase of integration of the system so at that time we have to deeper and troubleshoot what are the areas of issues and we have to pinpoint the uh, area where we have to troubleshoot so at that point troubleshooting and finding an issue and we have to deepen either the hardware as well as the firmware as well so these are the major aspects of the uh, decent topologies we have to consider mostly then these are the core of the embedded systems these are the core of the embedded system that uh, we all know all the embedded systems are based on the microprocessors and controllers and these are the list of uh, processes which uh, included uh, mostly all the systems some we have microprocessors controllers dsps and uh, ASIC uh, circuits programmable plds and off the shelf uh, devices so first of all we all know about the processors that the microprocessors have a very good capability of processing power but uh, mostly the uh, process uh, even though it has the uh, highly processing power it doesn't have uh, any peripheral mem memory timer controller we have to interface other hardware like the memories and timers and for the microprocessors but they have high processing powers and uh, when we compare with the microcontroller the microcontroller is a thing where we should be integrated with all these things but uh, the, the there would be some limitation for this microcontroller that uh, it would be uh, not much um, equipped with, uh, for the higher speed of operations and uh, higher memory sizes and uh, all these things so but uh, all the modules like the memory uh, like the modules that is uh, of uh, memory RAM all the modules are being built with the microcontrollers so based on the embedded system that we are developing that is the specification uh, area we have to select uh, one from the, all these things 
okay so we have to be familiar with the microprocessor controllers and again dsps dsps are also processors which which are very powerful than the microprocessors but it will be somewhat application specific that uh, we may need some and uh, use for the digital signal processing like the video and audio uh, processors uh, in that purposes we are using the digital signal processing so there must be some application application specific on this digital signal processing and they are highly powerful than the microprocessors and controllers uh, but it is application specific and the another thing is as it, uh, it is uh, exclusively as application specific designed circuits chips and uh, it will be required some smaller area and smaller functionalities but it is exclusively developed for the particular functionality that type of microcontrollers are all uh, exclusively available nowadays with the markets that for example we can have any modules like uh, adc or uh, any uh, digital converters and any logical devices uh, like that so if you need uh, some adc or something like that one architecture only we can get uh, some adc chips that is not uh, works on the based on the programming or firmware it doesn't require the assistance of the programming but uh, it is inbuilt uh, with the whole functionality so that type of application specific chips are called is ASIC circuits. So now the programmable logical devices. There are also we all well known about the uh, digital gates and all those things. Logic gates are nowadays available. And this type of PLDs that is programmable logical device is a single chip which will support a huge variety of logical gates. And uh, we can program and use these logical gates in a particular manner and uh, we on the time basis on the code basis we can vary the logical gates uh, according to the our uh, software and firmware that we can change the logical gates circuits as well as the logics and all the things through this program so these PLDs are nowadays hugely available and uh, the most commonly used PLDs are CPLD and FPGs and CPLD is some complex programmable logical devices which is consider a large amount of uh, logical gates integrated in the single chip and FPG is much more complicated which one which is field programmable gate, gate device and uh, the another thing is commercially off the shelf co components that is off the shelf components means um, uh, some control systems uh, are uh, which is highly compatible with some specific uh, purposes functionalities which will be developed by some manufacturers or some companies like that we can use the Arduino boards for the whole development and uh, Raspberry Pi uh, I think you all are familiar with those boards this type of boards are uh, an example for these codes and this box has some limitations that we can only use the uh, higher processing power and these interfaces and uh, the limited to that one and uh, we will be limited to the uh, uh, development based on that one. but the main advantages of this course is uh, we can save a huge amount of development time since uh, the cops are readily available with the manufacturer so we can directly buy and get it into integrate into a particular system so that uh, there will be no need to wastage of time for the development process as well to build and uh, to design the whole circuit tree and uh, the whole boards uh, there will be take much more time in the design phase so that we can easily avoid uh, that type of headaches uh, by using this course but it will be uh, specifically available by the manufacturer so this is an in a sample interface this is not the uh, a particular uh, embedded system control uh, interface it's a sample interfacing which i want to show you for an example that is the interfacing means the main block would be the main controller and uh, inbuilt small 
blocks up the main modules that are present in that particular controller and there will be some input devices and output devices that we have to interface so initially based on the requirements and the specification we have to define what are the input devices and what are the input signals what type of input signals we are uh, getting into the processor and also we make sure that the output devices also uh, for uh, what purpose we are driving for what to what device we have to interface or what uh, control signals we have to give as an output <laughs> but this all all the things uh, we have to get from the design uh, sorry the specification uh, phase itself so based upon that one we can interface this input and the output devices based on the requirements phases so, so this adc at time of circuit DAC and all these modules are inbuilt in a microcontroller itself so we can just go through what is an adc timer DAC, and i think all of you are very familiar with the, uh, this type of modules i think these are the digital interfaces and digital modules that are available within the microcontroller itself you i think uh, you are, are familiar with the ram and the flash memory ram is the ram random access memory uh, that is working memory that will help for the processor to process the things and the flash memory is the uh, memory that would help for to load the code and the all the things based on the ram flash the processor are variants and uh, according to our specification and the need we would select the particular uh, ram as well as the flash memory uh, for the uh, processor and uh, if we need to interface any analog inputs we have we must need some adc modules itself so we have to go for uh, an adc integrated chips or integrated controller particularly for that purpose and uh, if we need any time of especially almost all the logic uh, circuits and logic development we need timer and almost all the uh, 99 percentage of the controllers and processors includes these timer circuits as well and DAC. DAC is the digital to analog converter and mainly we have to analyze whether we need any analog output or not if we need uh, definitely uh, uh, analog output we can either get it from the uh, DAC controller and directly from a microprocessor so if we need that one we have to particularly specify that type of output is needed in the specification time and we have to select a particular processor which includes this NAC as well and IO is the uh, input and output pins that we all know we have to interface many things many things like uh, according to our logic and the design and the specification we all know about the whole IO pins that will be required for the our uh, control system design that we may, might know for the relay driving or any other indicator uh, driving, we may need input and output pins. Uh, so uh, then we can move to the uh, digital communications area that is a space area peripheral interface. This is an uh, example for a digital communication. Uh, I think you all are familiar with it, all those things. I don't want to go into particularly what are the digital communication and they will be huge steps in the uh, theory parts. So I just brief on what are the digital communications and the examples. So this is an SPI and I2C uh, inter-integrated circuit communication. I will explain what are the things going on there. And uh, the another thing is USA. USA and USB. These are the digital communication uh, modules more commonly available in our controller in built and next is PWM, pulse width modulation. I think this is also very familiar by your people, but yes, we can go through that one. And this is the ADC. I, uh, as I said, um, this the input will be an analog signal and it will be converted to a digital signal based on the sample and hold circuit and the condensation method. And digital is the perverse process of this analog to digital conversion. That is our uh, digital signals will be converted into an analog signal and this are the communication protocol i just um, brief that one again uh, that is uh, our digital communication system can be 
to classify into two types in the system protocol and intra system protocol in the system protocols means uh, it would be communicate uh, within the different devices from our control system to any other control system and intra system protocol means uh, it would communicate within the uh, control system itself that is uh, for example if you developing a single ports or multiple ports uh, the communication must be in between these uh, three ports or two ports or multiple ports okay and uh, for inter system protocol this is all the all examples that is your protocol user protocol and usb protocol we are familiar with the your protocol universal asynchronous <coughs> receiver transmitter i think you all are familiar with that one so i don't want to go to in deep in that area so these are the inter system protocols commonly used to, to communicate with, uh, within the control system and the interest uh, sorry uh, uh, inter protocol means the outside the control system and intra protocol means uh, these are the uh, communication protocol digital communication protocol is be used for communicating in between the um, devices of the control system that is i2c spa and can can you are from there and control area network protocol and it is developed by the robert bosch uh, it's particularly uh, mainly used to, in the area of the automotive product development system. And this is the PWM. I think you all are familiar with that one. And uh, this is, uh, you, you can see what is the PWM. That is a pulse width modulation means the pulse of a signal is varying in accordance with the time frame. That is the total time period would be the same we will maintain the total time period as it is and uh, just moves the on time or off time adjust the on time or off time based on the requirements so the whole frequency would be remain the same since the total time period remains the same so the main advantage of this type of pulse modulation using in our control system uh, by using uh, any driver of uh, any motor driver or something like that one uh, we can maintain a single frequency as well. so the um, external components circuit for the uh, filter circuits as well as the noise generating issues we can avoid such type of things by maintaining a uh, permanent frequency as well so the patent name helps a lot of driving circuits as well and this all are the uh, basic things that we have to consider and analyze while we move to the embedded system development. So, next we can uh, just go through the design challenges where, that we have to consider. That is, first one is the cost. That is, while we go for the design and take the requirements and the specification, we must focus on the cost as well. That is, uh, I like that as per the requirement, we have to select the processor and interfaces circuits and the interfaces and uh, uh, the whole things. So we have to consider about the cost, where the market is has to be deployed and the whole analysis based on this analysis, we have to consider the unit cost, either the components cost, the PCB cost as well as well. This all contribute to the unit cost as well, and the labor cost and the development cost. All the things are considered as, uh, as and uh, we have to consider as a unit cost. So while developing a product, uh, it has to be less cost, but we don't able to. We have to give our reliability as well, and we don't sacrifice the quality as well. Without sacrificing, we have to. Uh, keep the cost as low as uh, possible and the size size is the main things nowadays uh, we all are well known about the uh, compatibility that is the uh, our any mobile type of uh, embedded systems and portable systems are much more compatible and uh, the size is very small uh, we can see almost all the uh, integrated parts and the modules and the all the things are available nowadays in our mobile phone and we can just compare the size of the mobile phone at the earlier stage and the initial stage and the nowadays 
we can compare that one and then even though all the facilities and functionalities are included in the modern mobile phones the size is very small that means the integ integration of all the parts and the size is very small for that one uh, to uh, reduce the size uh, we can select the design on the design phase itself we can consider this as a parameter that uh, for example we can uh, it, uh, it is readily available different size of sized components with the same parameters but the cost will be a factor at that point of time but even even the size is a your priority uh, design challenge for us we have to to consider the size of the uh, processor as well as the components that we are using and the main PCBs and we have to reduce the size as as could uh, we have and next is the performance that is the execution that the performance means uh, uh, how we can perform a particular task that means uh, if we have if uh, we are developed a control system we have to uh, gives uh, takes some uh, data from the input and come uh, after the processing we have to give some output as well so uh, the computation and we have to if we have to give some outputs the performance you know, must be a, a major factor while uh, it has to be a, if we have any time constraints and almost all, uh, all these things we have to uh, consider the performance factor and this is the power that is for example uh, if you uh, design a system it must be uh, take less amount of power as we all know that uh, you know it is the power is the major issue as globally globally so each and every system we might uh, be developing uh, the power is a main factor so that we can if a standalone uh, of uh, the control system we may use some batteries or something like that one and uh, we may use some power antennas for the bluetooth and wireless communications and maybe some displays maybe interfaces with uh, some control system so almost all the modules will require some power so we can uh, reduce the power consumption mainly in hardware and software and we all know that uh, we can use the uh, display for example if we switch on the display for some time and then we can see that in the mobile phone itself if we have any idle time it will be automatically switch off this uh, display after a continuous idle time that is the mode of logic that uh, to save the power itself. If the uh, display will be continuously powered on, uh, the battery life will be very minimal. So to increase the uh, life of the battery as well on the own, uh, even though if it is not used to for from the battery, the if we can perform a particular task or uh, perform our uh, control system job with the less amount of power, it would be much better than the, any other system and the next one is the timeline timeline is the development that is after we collecting the uh, gathering the information and specifications and identify the issues after uh, identify the issues we gather the requirements and uh, all those things and from there to the till the end of the product development there will be a development time so so we have to reduce the time length that is we don't have to waste uh, by continuously uh, on the back just after the development so we can just develop the software and hardware in a parallel mode of uh, process so after the uh, development of the uh, software as well as the hardware we can integrate both and just continuously so we can reduce in that way we can reduce the development time and we have to uh, very clearly mentioned the specification and the requirements on the initial time itself so that we can avoid almost all the errors and the modification after the deployment if a customer or any uh, customer or consumer is not able to access his all output parts and uh, they have any need any modification we have to uh, make another uh, modification and update the design so it may require some 
a huge amount of time for the again for the development and the modification so the timeline is a very particular thing and very major thing for this particular development process and next is the flexibility flexibility should be uh, we have to um, yeah, if we follow a industrial way of design and we can integrate uh, our control system to many devices and compact to, to many devices and also if it uh, makes us a standard uh, codings and follow the standard coding strategies we can reuse the same same for multiple things also and um, if we want a quick update to our control system we can do it uh, very fastly so all of the all the things and uh, these challenges would be uh, have to be in keep in mind while we uh, gather the information and we uh, design the architecture itself so these are the almost all the challenges we have uh, we are facing through this line and uh, this have to be very care about this one and these are the major design course that we, we have to meet that uh, the function and the performance requirement. Uh, we all know that uh, if we pass the uh, design challenges, we, uh, we very well know about the design challenges. The design goals have to be met. That the uh, function and the performance requirement, that uh, uh, whether we have to analyze whether our system or the developed control system is functional and performance based upon the specification that we have had gathered initially and as we know the size and the cost of the system that uh, the size and the cost of the system has to be very uh, size would be very minimal and cost would be also affordable for the all the, the things that uh, if we consider a unit cost for a particular thing it, uh, almost all the people are going after the cost since almost all uh, will be compared the cost available with the many vendors that, that we uh, we all also do with the online uh, searching when we do online searching that if we pick a one uh, any material we will again reach it with the other vendors also the cost and we will go definitely go for the uh, same material but whether the, uh, where, where the cost is uh, very uh, less we will go for the like that if we develop a uh, our control system our, our goal is to minimize the size and cost as well then only it can catch the market as well and also the power consumption already we have discussed that one power consumption be very minimal that that if, um, if you go for buying any displays or something like that one or any ac air conditioners uh, we will definitely go for um, uh, very uh, updated technologies that is only we are looking for this power consumption is very less and nowadays we are all know that uh, almost all the solar power cells are now they are available you know, for the release of the uh, power consumption so almost all uh, we are very concerned about the power consumption so like that our system would be also consumed with less power but we have to perform all the requirements as well and uh, another goal is to uh, our effort and the development time that is by by proper making of the architecture design and uh, well specified uh, requirements we can definitely reduce the development time as well as the effort with the minimum effort and minimum uh, uh, development time we can go into there and uh, definitely go to a prototype as well so that would be must care about uh, during that this uh, architectural development time okay and the another thing is the maintenance time and effort also and the maintenance time means if we have any issues while uh, after the de deployment we definitely have some troubleshooting and debugging process so um, if the debugging and the troubleshooting process is very less then, then we can definitely go for the initial release of the product as well so uh, we have to definitely reduce the 
maintenance time as well as the effort. And uh, another thing is the reliability. As we all know that uh, if a product is not lasting uh, for a long time, we won't accept all these things. So we must be very careful that uh, the reliability. How we can make the reliability means uh, our uh, the whole uh, uh, product development parameters. If we keep the, all the things, all the things we uh, we can definitely keep the reliability as well. Okay. And next, I think almost all are covered by this one. And if you have any questions, you can just ask me. Okay, I will read. Uh, uh, how the hardware and software system integration is done and uh, any software tool to be used? Uh, uh, hi, Deva. Um, the hardware and system integration is done using. Uh, we have some tools uh, for the hardware development and the software development. So, the hardware development, we can make use of the ORCAD, OLTM. Uh, like that tools we can use for the hardware development uh, for the um, PCB as well as the schematic development and for the software development um, it will be based upon the processor that uh, we are selection, uh, selected that if we go for the ST micro electronics or microchip processor for the company where we be selected they will provide a uh, so software tool for the software development platform so there must be an integrity and they have some tools which will be able to program into our processor as well so there must be some tools that means uh, you can use the microchips uh, mp there or sc microps uh, micro electronics s cube uh, or iar key software anything you can use for the processor or combination development and processor coding itself it will be easily and deploy the firmware into the processor as well and you can use the all team or orcad or something like that any uh, devices and mostly the almost all the industries are using this orcad and all team tool for the hardware development and shama's one question uh, <coughs> how you protect an embedded system against an ESD. ESD is very critical thing that ESD is electrostatic discharge thing. It will be very harmful for the electronic components that uh, the electrostatic discharge may be uh, harmful for the components that it will may damage to the uh, embedded system and any components as well. So we have to protect uh, the ESD or electrostatic discharge. So we can make use of any TVS diodes or transient suppressors we can make use of that one to protect the embryo system. And uh, Sanjit Kumar, I can share the PPT to um, the CTAC people so that they can uh, share you with it also. Definitely, I will share you. And there is a question that uh, real time and non real time. And the real time system definitely depends upon the time factor, that is, the uh, if we program a particular timer and if we put uh, a timer for one minute it will be definitely um, works or gives output uh, after one minute and so the, such type of control system based on the uh, time related one is called the real time and the other one is the uh, non-real time system development. And Abhishek is asked for power distribution design for embedded system. Power distribution, I can get you uh, the design for embedded system. That is, power distribution, you mean uh, uh, any, not only for the embedded system, any devices we need power. So, uh, we want to know whether what are the power inputs that after designing a full control system we can uh, just give the power that uh, what is the logical power and what are the maximum power that we want to give to our control system based upon that we have to design a power supply either we can get uh, get an off the shelf power supply either uh, we can design some sort of power modules as well 
that is there are almost all the modules are there that is linear power supplies and uh, switching power supplies switching power supplies uh, like a boost system buck boost system buck regulators are, are readily available so we can use any of these modules for the power circuit mm. and uh, sap is uh, asked for uh, which communication protocol is used for a particular interface like can you clarify selection KTT and the communication protocol that we, we all studied that uh, there are some sort of digital communication like that the I2C, SPA, uh, USB and UATR we are using. So we must know what are the interfaces that we are using for the secondary device and where we have to communicate. So the secondary device is very most important like that we can if we are uh, we have to provide some data to a display. That display may be some SP communication supports SP communications or I2C communication. Then we have to uh, analyze what type of communication uh, in our uh, processor is required. So to interface with a display that which supports SP, we must interface that with SP. Otherwise, we have to definitely know uh, what is the communication that we want to. Uh, give to the secondary device then only we can uh, definitely identify which communication would be we have to interface with that is based on the uh, where we have to uh, deploy selecting a process what are the main parameter need to consider Sanjit Kumar is asking one and uh, the main parameter that we have to uh, identify is what are the um input systems that we are using that is if we are interfacing some sort of uh, uh, analog devices we definitely use adcs uh, any sensors any digital sensors for example if we are using some temperature sensor and it is communicating via i2c we definitely have our processor uh, an i2c communication module and it will communicate with the sensor and gather the data. And uh, if you want to communicate to any GSM module or Wi-Fi module, we need uh, almost all the G, uh, Wi-Fi modules and G, GSM modules are work on the UART communication. So we will use that UART communication for that part. So the main parameter is based on the uh, requirement that we uh, need to specify. Only based upon that one, we can specify a particular processor from that parameter. So, Kishan is asked for often in design of embedded system, various trade offs are considered and chosen. Um, how are these considered? Um, no, what is considered okay? Uh, the trade off that means uh, is also uh, depends upon various the scenarios uh, and the specification and the gatherings of the uh, specifications. So, we must definitely well known about the uh, where the environment our control system are operating then only we can definitely uh, completely uh, choose the particular trade-offs that we are constructing for the embedded system. So uh, within a limit that uh, I can uh, give you some examples, but the time is not permitting me to do so. But uh, right now I can just say that the main important thing for an embedded system development or product development cycle is the inputs from the uh, specifications. The, if our specifications and uh, the all requirements are very perfect, we can definitely uh, look into this area very clearly. Then only we can know what type of processor and how many pins of processors would be selected for our application and what type of modules of uh, we, we have to be included in the processor. 
And uh, if you have any questions, you can post it all up here. Uh, okay, I think that's all the uh, clarification required. And now uh, we came to the uh, end of the session. And uh, now I request Mr. Kadar, a principal engineer of here and DCAT, to say the word of thanks. Kadar, sir. Good evening, all. That's been a really uh, enriching experience to hear Sri Ram. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, tell about all the stages in the development of the embedded system, right from the specification to the product development. So it's indeed a, indeed a privilege for us to hear you around. And from all of us here at the RNDC IT students, lecturers, we wish to thank Sri Ram for his uh, really enriching uh, speech on embedded systems. And no. we expect that uh, in future also you'll be associated with our uh, webinars, or you can visit our facility in CDAC also and uh, uh, interact with our students who we'll would be really happy to hear you there. Yeah. And uh, many of you might be uh, really deeply interested in taking up embedded systems after this webinar, hopefully. Thank you, Ram. Thank you okay. all the participants for your uh, patient listening. And we hope that you uh, attend the future webinars also. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Ram. Thank you, Sakarasa, and thank you, all the participants. Uh, thank you all once again. Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe.